Coming up right now, we're going to tell you why a teen's message triggered fighter jets all to take action. Also coming up, a popular backyard game becomes a first of its kind college scholarship for two teens. A little bit later on, Queen Bay releases her new music, why a radio station refuses, well, just to play the song. Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Jackson. I'm Mitch English, welcoming you to Daily Flash. We got a great show all lined up, planned to go for you. We're going to go round and round, and it looks like somebody's got. Do we have a around. driver what, in what, from the Daytona 500? What, Dale Earn. <laughs> Matt, <laughs> where, where, where you been, man? Number 43? Spent, spent, spent the weekend in the infield at Daytona. Got to see The Rock. <laughs> Got to see them all turn left real fast. I think my life has changed forever. Well, we are we're glad to have you here on the straightaway, Dale, uh, for sure. <laughs> Let's hopefully uh, we won't uh, we won't have any. Uh, have you noticed we're three wide right now? Uh, there you go, uh -huh. side by side. Yes, yeah, side yeah. by side. Yeah. You got it. All like right, that. very good. No tailgating. Uh, maybe Matt Doolittle can join us for this I would uh, hope this so. talker in a second because I think uh, you. I know Matt loves cats. Matt, cat he, he loves his cat for sure. 100%. Yeah. So cat couture. Lady cat fashion is now a big thing. So women in New York have decided what they're going to do is they're going to start dressing more like cats, more like the essence of a cat, that oh, okay. sexy indifference, that that confident um, way that they just sort of shrug like you off. Like they don't care. They and don't then, care. And they have yeah. their tail up in the air. Exactly. Uh, that part I don't mind. But, uh, anything else? And if you've noticed, there have been more cats in advertisements. Sarah Jessica Parker is using hers. Uh, you've got. Um, Kim Kardashian, she uses three cats in her Skims ads with someone. Taylor Swift. And Taylor Swift's cat. I mean, well, the movie bang. Argyle. Claudia Really, the cat wasn't there had really go. anything to do with the plot, but it was just like a little side, little ha ha kind of thing. Yeah. And that was Claudia Schiffer. Claudia Schiffer's cat. Oh, it was is that actually so? Claudia yeah. Schiffer's cat oh in that my movie. Gosh. She was friends with the director or something, and it just worked out their cat happened to be trained so they could use it. Now, Matt has one of those cat backpacks, yes. don't you? Yes, yeah, it's just like Margo. that. In the movie, too, there's a book in the back uh, that has all Claudia, it says Claudia Schiffer. You put it, did you see that? Yeah, I, yeah. I happened to notice that. So Is it Claudia it. spelled C-L-A-W? Uh, actually, that's... <laughs> See, that's hey, why come I'm going to get the cats. That's awesome. I'm going yeah. to talk The about Super Bowl that. ad with the Mayo cat, that cat made $5 million. Did, really? Right. The cat well, got $5 million. My cat don't do anything. I have to clean up after my cat. Mine, just, mine sits on my face in the middle of the morning, and I'm like, get off, get off. You mentioned the Super Bowl ad. Did you see the Budweiser uh, Clydesdales? <laughs> don't, don't. I won't. I, I've okay. gone. But. Budweiser Clydesdales Super Bowl ad and the dog that kisses the Clydesdale. Yeah, yeah. So that dog belongs to Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. Why are All these Nepo, Nepo pets. Nepo, Nepo pets. pets. That's Which, by a the trend. way, yeah, that's actually a little action figure. It's called Nepo pets. Nepo pets. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, interesting. Yeah. Uh, now we need to get our cats famous, I guess. <laughs> There's things you can do when you're on a plane, and yes. there's things that we should know by now mm -hmm. that we should not do at all. Listen to this story. It was an offhanded joke. It was from a teenager who's on board a flight, and it caused, well, havoc all in the air. A year and a half later, he's now in the course room. Here's what we do know. He's 18 years old. He sent a text message to his friends, which read, quote, on my way to blow up the plane. Yeah. That happened in July of 2022. He claims he sent the message to a private Snapchat group as a joke, which he thought was encrypted. However, the message intercepted by intelligence agencies over the French airspace and as it was traveling from London to Spain. Authorities scrambled to get a Spanish fighter up into escorting the jet. When the plane landed, teen was arrested, slapped with a court date. Well, the man now faces $150,000 in fines to cover the expenses for the emergency Ooh. fighter jet deployment. A judge in Madrid recently cleared him of all charges because no bomb was found and was not a legitimate threat. And, you know, well, it says even in lines in TSA, it says, no, not, don't joke, don't even joke. That goes onto the airplane as well. And then it also should tell you, just because you think things, uh, no one else can see it, yeah. they, obviously they can. And and he claims he's of Middle Eastern descent, so he felt like all the eyes were on him anyway. So he was sending that text as a joke to friends, which, like you said, we're in a day and age where you don't joke you, about you that. You can't, even sarcasm. And it is a question, like, he says, I was sending it through a private Snapchat group that should have been encrypted, so somebody should not have had access to that message. 
message. Well, note to self, I think anybody has access to any of your messages. Uh, that's where we're regardless at. Regardless of whether it's a private chat group or not. And I got to say kudos to the, the, this is where the government worked. You yeah. know, I mean, if somebody said, imagine if they didn't do that and yes. there was a bomb. So really thinking, uh, well, he wasn't thinking. That's I'm it. just surprised that the, that he didn't get slapped with anything because obviously it costs money to send up those fighter jets. $150,000. $150, I mean, he should have been fined for something. I mean, come on. You lose your cell phone privilege yeah. for a year or something like that. How <laughs> Could you that? imagine? <laughs> well, speaking of teens, a pair of Colorado high school cornhole players making history by becoming the first duo to earn a college scholarship. The high school seniors are taking their bag-tossing talents to Winthrop University in there South Carolina. The teammates are considered to be five-star recruits in the popular backyard game. The duo were named two-time national champions and the first ever to earn scholarships from a Division I school. They say they used to be involved in other sports before they started traveling the country for cornhole tournaments. How about yes. that? I, I think, you know, and then good for them, number one. I think yeah. that's that's the best part about it is the fact they're going to college and be able to do something that they love that you wind up drinking cold beer and doing on Saturdays mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, but it goes to show you that we are looking for different ways to um, and, and amuse ourselves. And if Cornhole gets you to college, then God and bless they, you. They get on TV when ESPN has nothing else to show, <laughs> and it's one of those like days of the summer where it's just baseball. They're like cornhole tournament. Fox decided to do that. They they did some uh, bowling tournament in Missouri after the 500 was rain delayed. Uh, yeah. Was, yeah, it was a bowling was tournament <laughs> in, from Missouri. It was hilarious. <laughs> Beyonce making her country chart debut and the new music is initially getting the cold shoulder from a few country radio stations. Beyonce released two new country singles called Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages. Her new studio album is going to be released at the end of March. Right now there's no word if more country stations will play her new songs or if they're waiting for feedback from the audiences. But her latest is being released as to Little Nas X and his 2018 single, Old Town Road. Now, black artists are making a bigger impact in country music. Darius Rucker, Mickey Guyton, uh, Kane Brown, Jimmy Allen, all growing in popularity with their country music hits. And I've said this before, is that country music, uh, you see a lot of artists start off in country and then work their way into pop because they have such a great fan base in country music, working in country music, mm -hmm. I, I know this. The one station I know in Oklahoma that was getting a lot of flack about it was like, Listen, we don't really add songs until some of the bigger stations do because we don't have the staff to do music. So mm -hmm. we kind of copy what the other ones do, but we're out here in the middle of nowhere. And somebody had said, are you going to play Beyonce? And we're like, well, no, not right now. We, mm -hmm. it's, it's not even charted yet. Yeah. So they were getting a lot of uh, flack for that. I don't think that it'd be stupid for a radio station to say, no, we're not going to at all. And I don't think that's the case. No, I, don't I don't think, think anybody's, yeah. I mean, if anything, it's like you're appealing to a whole new yeah, exactly. uh, audience. And I'm sure she wants that. But it, like you said, it takes time. And oftentimes with the state of radio, everything's pre-produced, pre-recorded. So these shows have probably been recorded two weeks in advance. So it's not like you can just pop in a brand new tune. Yeah. You have to wait until those things chart and until it makes it into your playlist where you can include it into it, your show. It, it's a different game. It's not yeah. where you just give the, the DJ a, the record. A, a record and <laughs> it starts playing it. And all the music mandate, it's not by the stations anymore. If you look at the biggest it's, radio it, co company in the country, yeah. it's iHeart. And that comes down from the, the higher ups at iHeart. That's not coming from the station. Program, exactly. Directly. And there's also a question, well, do you play it on the pop stations or the country stations? It, it will. Or, It'll or cross over. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and, and in all fairness, there are some country songs that are going Going over to pop and yeah. they're still staying true to their, their country roots. Amy Schumer has come forward to talk about her dramatic change in appearance. The 42 year old recently appeared on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon and viewers were surprised by her face which appeared puffy and swollen. Social media went wild with the question what happened to Amy's face? Amy then took to Instagram to share her battle with endometriosis and autoimmune disease. Endometriosis occurs when cells in the lining of the uterus are found elsewhere in the body. Treatment focuses on pain relief and improving quality of life, which may include surgery or ho hormone therapy treatment. So there you go, Amy Schumer coming forward with some health issues that yes. she's having. Well, and she had talked about this a, a while back before she was going through some health issues as well. She's also saying, can we concentrate on Life and Beth, which is her new, yes, her new which show. is, you know, so she, I'm certain is like, I don't care if you're making, as long as I'm out there and I'm talking. And she, she wrote, directed and stars in this. So this is all hers. Um, you know, which kind of makes you wonder, okay, did this 
I mean, that's a lot of work. Did that affect, was all that work kind of maybe affecting her health possibly? I, it, I mean, it, I'm just speculating. Well, I know she had a really bad pregnancy. Like they documented it, how bad yes. it was and all the surgeries she had to go, like they basically had to put her insides back together after oh she had God. her They did. Yeah. And, and she was referring to that before. Mm -hmm. as like, this has happened before. Yeah. And so I don't think that is as big a surprise as everybody might think. Do you think the pressure, obviously, there's there's always pressure in Hollywood to stay somewhat thin and look great with the Ozempic trend and oh, everybody just... losing weight. Do you think there's extra pressure for her as people say, well, she's sort of a larger, fuller set gal. Why isn't she on the Ozempic exactly. track, right? And, and she could come out and say that, but she, you know, obviously has, yeah. has legitimate uh, issues, medical issues as well. Hey, coming up right around the corner, we're talking to the parents. We're going to go to heading into our parenthood. Very important issues. Uh, welcome back. Time for us to jump into the parenthood. As our lives become increasingly digital, parents are struggling with the challenge of managing screen time for their children. Joining us now is parenting expert Catherine Celery. She's got some great advice, as she always does, on how to actually strike a balance between embracing technology and maintaining those conscious parents' principles. Catherine, we love having you on your show. Welcome back. I, I want to get through Thank these you. points that you have because this is a major, major problem. You have four major points you want to discuss. I want to jump right into it. Mindful tech integration. All right, does that mean I need to know where my kids' stuff is at? Well, you know, let's see. So you've got to consider when your child comes to you asking for, whether it's the phone, the computer, the entertainment system, what's going on inside of them. Uh -huh. So say your child approaches you asking for their first phone and before you shoot them down, you have a conversation about why they want the phone. So for a child, a cell phone can be a lot of vital socialization outside of school. Children without them can feel left out. So cell phones not only can be a security blanket for overly anxious kids, allowing them to reach out with their family if they need support or guidance. It's also part of being a part of the group. Okay. So this conversation is an excellent time to practice identifying the difference between I just want it versus what's the need? What okay. is the need that they're trying to meet by using the phone it, is so it, that you can get clear? Meaning like, oh, my friends have one. I want to talk to them. Well, is that, well you can still go over to their so, house and play. I mean, is there that kind of justification? It's a solution to meeting that need. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, that so there sense. are lots of ways to meet the need for connection. This is one of them. All right. It makes a lot of sense. Second uh, point you're saying is tracking harmful behavior, either getting done to them or maybe what they're doing. What do you mean by that? Yeah, both of those, exactly. We know it's a, you know, it's a whole wild world out there. And lots of phone have, you know, have built within them downloadable apps yeah. that you can track their usage, their activity. And depending on the age of your child, some even offer the ability to limit certain functions, sites, communication. So these features paired with open communication about why maybe they're spending too much time on their device and why that can be harmful to them these are all tools that parents can use to check in periodically on the child's behavior, online, otherwise. And it serves as a great segue to explaining responsibilities yeah. for using technology, the dangers it can have. But of course, as you know, we gotta be careful about the power over thing and activating the proverbial three R's, retaliation, rebellion, and resistance. Which we've talked about before here a on lot. the show. So yeah. yeah. And you say that healthy boundaries, you've got to set those. And are we talking time or what they say or do or all of that as well? All of it, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so it can be difficult to set those boundaries that are enforceable with your child and you're always going to want to do it together. So it starts by considering your children's needs, the feelings, that's our first step. Then you engage them in decision-making together on limits around screen time, co-creating tech-free zones in your house, scheduling family screen time or screen free time and modeling all the healthy tech habits that you want them to take. I mean, obviously we need to be mindful of our own tech habits, right? Because right. we're the model for them. So maybe one idea is that you have, if you have a few kids, one of them each night could be the arbiter of technology at the dinner table. <laughs> okay. And this child, I mean, it's actually a great idea. This child can then decide if someone else's technology use is adding to the group taking away from the group. It engages everybody in critical thinking and conversation about this huge issue, but it allows them to share with everybody at the table, the whole family, you know, focusing on technology, being closed off because of technology. So all of this is such a great mindful way 
to have a relationship with your kids around screens, you, you, promoting you, a stronger bond, shared activities, open communication, everything. And, and, and you know, I, what I love about what you had just said is the fact that, okay, so if one person's the, the, the moderator or whatever, when it's the next day, they're gonna respect that same decision because they're, they're the ones like, all right, I know what it's like to be in that position to turn it down. And, and I love that idea. And it gives them that power and understanding all at the same time. I love that, great. Totally. Always great advice. Totally. Finally, you say digital citizenship, something I never had to worry about when I was a kid. What's digital citizenship? I know me either. <laughs> <laughs> so, did, yeah, you're introducing this idea that, you know, because of this device, you really are a digital citizen. And they understand if you give them some support around this and guidance about that, you know, this whole idea. So you can propose to them that their device is a passport to the digital world. Okay. And that it's a privilege that comes with rights, but also consequences if the laws of the nation are not respected. So for example, their citizenship could be revoked. And this can be a great analogy to explain the impact of their digital footprint, help them engaging with technology in mindful, informed ways. While they're responsible for their own actions online, the same way they are in real life, it's important to reassure them that if they ever feel at risk, yeah. you're here to support them and keep them safe no matter what, which is why not using rewards and punishments is so important because we don't want to jeopardize right. that trusting communication openness. We want to deal with the problems, but not in ways that are going to activate retaliation, rebellion and resistance. And, and you know, I love you saying, you know, in this citizenship, we have a social contract, if you will, of how we're supposed to act, yeah. you know, around real people. Somehow that gets thrown out the door when it comes to digital and they think they can say and do whatever. That would encompass that. And, and I picked that up from what you had said is just the fact that, okay, um, if you are, if you would act this way in real life, would you do it online? And a lot of times it, they don't match at all. So I can it's totally understand It's really that. becoming a huge thing. There's a sense of an invisibility cloak. Like, because it's digital, you can't see me. Therefore, my behavior may change. Yeah. When it, in reality, the person on the receiving end, whether you're invisible or not invisible, is having the impact of your words and actions. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. And I think it's a different screen time. Like, um, you know, you almost kind of wish the TV, we didn't have the, the cell phone, because the TV, at least you knew they were in the front room watching it. You can monitor it better. But now, like you said, exactly. with your iPads and everything, they can be anywhere and doing that. They could be anywhere with anyone. Goodness, it's, yeah. it's really, it's a huge world. We have to be really thinking about a lot, parents. All right. Dr. or Catherine, thank you so much. You're my, you're my doctor. You're so I welcome. Talk to you. uh, freeparentingbook.com, Conscious Parenting Revolutions, what it's all about. And this is so important. Thank you so much for actually uh, discussing this. And of course, you at home can join us on our website. If you want to watch this interview all over again, go to dailyflashshow.com. Let's check in now with Tony Toscano to find out what's coming out of Hollywood and straight to your screen, no matter what size you're gonna watch it on. With the latest, here's Tony. Thanks, Mitch. Streaming on Peacock is the redemption drama, Bosco. If freedom's a state of mind, I guess my dream should be enough. Just think about how much better your kid's gonna be without you around. Bosco, he gonna grow up. Based on the story of Quante Bosco Adams, sentenced to 35 years for attempted possession of marijuana, he escapes to see his daughter, but is forced to take responsibility for his past. I chatted with Quante Adams and actor Aubrey Joseph, who plays him in the film. What strikes me is that after all of this, you've managed not only to keep your humanity, but your sense of humor. Yeah, you have to have that or else you go insane, right? <laughs> Or maybe right. I am crazy a little bit, right? <laughs> I think it's, it's something in there for every uh, everyone, you know. I think it speaks to, you know, our, our people, but it, but it speaks to everyone, you know what I mean? I think it's just, at the end of the day, it's a redemption story, and it's it's really showing, like, how much of a hero that, that Bosco was, you know what I mean? Like, he was willing to do anything, despite his circumstances, to get home to his daughter. Bosco is a heartfelt and powerful statement about allowing yourself to overcome mistakes and the power of self-healing. Again, you can check out Bosco streaming on Peacock. He gets a B and is rated TVMA. In selected theaters is the new family comedy, Popular Theory. Welcome to high school. Where's the rabbit when we finish? 
is acted out on a daily basis. In other words, popularity is all that matters. Me. Are you lost? That's me. Growing up, I didn't have many friends. I had science. You spend every weekend by yourself. No more science. So just do science in my head. I'll know if you're doing science in your head. You're doing it right now, aren't you? Erwin is a girl genius and the youngest student in high school. She's struggling with social isolation when she meets fellow science guru Winston. The two team up to invent a chemical that changes high school hierarchy forever. I chatted with series stars Cheryl Hines and Sophia Reed Gansert. You either connect with it in, in the way that when you were young or as an adult, you're watching somebody young go through it and you're, tr you're trying to help them and you're doing everything you can, but it's probably not right. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, this, this movie and this character really helped me grow like personally and realize like, you know, you don't, you don't need to change yourself to find friends. And it's the exact opposite. Like you need to stay, you need to say how, you know, how you want to act and what jokes you want to make in order to find the right people. Popular theory is a throwback to those breezy family films of the 1960s and 70s. The film is lighthearted and a good pick for a family movie night. Again, popular theory is playing in selected theaters and gets a B. It's rated PG. For The Daily Flash, I'm film critic Tony Toscano. Welcome to your daily digits today. Your first digit is 8 million. That's how much someone paid for some used sneakers. Believe me, it wasn't me, unfortunately. Someone paid $8 million for six pairs of Air Jordans, one apiece from the last games of the 91, 92, 93, 96, 97, and 98 championship series. They sold out last week and in a Sotheby's auction dubbed the Dynasty Collection. Sotheby's didn't identify the buyer and described the seller only as a private American collector who right. obtained them from a longtime Bulls executive. So, unfortunately, I didn't get them stuff. Next up, we're going to talk about some monkey business. That's about 30,000 worth of monkey business, and there is some backlash. A plan was established for the largest monkey breeding facility in the U.S., which would allow 30,000 monkeys to roam within um, outfitted warehouses in Georgia. Residents, however, aren't so sure about how secure the facility would be, and they worry about the primates getting out and spreading disease. Also, animal rights groups are calling for the plan to be scrapped, arguing that breeding primates for medical tests is cool and provides little benefit in coming up with the new treatments for humans due to the differences in species. That sounds horrible if any of them get out. And your final number today is 36 million, and I hope this wasn't you. A missed deadline meant someone in Florida lost out on $36 million. You got to check your tickets, people. No one stepped up to claim the prize from uh, August before the deadline, making the ticket void. The winning ticket was purchased at a Publix in Jacksonville, Florida. The law requires that 80% of the unclaimed funds be transferred to a trust fund for education, even though Florida's not that great with education, with the remainder being held for the prize pool according to the state lottery. And trust me, I used to have stacks and stacks, a lot of tickets, but I made an effort once a month to at least go run those through the machine. Mitch, you got anything like that laying around? By our door, there is some uh, lottery tickets there, and I want to grab one because don't they? Yeah, they have like a little what do they call it? like a little scanning thing, and they'll scan, and they, they have it on the app now, so you don't even have to go to Seven. Oh, really? Yeah, well, that's definitely gonna have to do that. Yeah, I'll probably be doing that after I get home. Matt, thanks for those daily digits. More Flash coming up after this. This is Daily Flash with your hosts Andrea Jackson and. Mitch English, trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hey everybody, I'm Mitch English. I'm Andrea Jackson. This is Daily Flash, your source for trending news and entertainment. Big uh, movie with Samuel Jackson about snakes on a plane. You yeah, about that? sure. Uh, about snakes on a chopper. Uh, it <gasps> happened in Clearwater, Florida. Uh -uh. The Coast Guard has taken off, and as they're landing, there's no. this bit. It's one no. of their Jayhawk helicopters. A snake, uh, about two foot long, actually got into one of their tires. Well, the thing is, they were like, well, how are we going to land this? It's kind of around our, our, our uh, wheels and stuff. Oh. They were able to uh, land safely, thank goodness. And uh, they found out it was a two foot corn snake, which is... Um, 
first, it doesn't sound scary, scary, but it's the word snake. It freaks nope. me out. Sure, like, of course. Nope, nope, forget about it. And it's non-poisonous, which is fine. Um, uh, it, again, nope, I don't care. Did, nope. it, <laughs> don't did care. it survive the landing? It, it did survive the landing. They were able to get it to, get it to uh, uh, well, go back to corn, I guess. Yeah. Corn I mean, snakes I mean, are beautiful. Are they are, really yeah, good. but they're but they are non-venomous, but they are gorgeous to look at. But they look scary because they're so colorful. If it's in clear water, I had to go see its dealer. So, you to get back on the problem. Matt, that. No, yeah. come on. I lived uh, over there. I mean, so, you know, so you can talk it. to it. Okay. Well, an offhanded joke from a teen on board a flight caused havoc in the air. Now, a year and a half later, he's facing a courtroom. Here's what we know An 18 year old sent a message to friends which read, quote, On my way to blow up the plane in July of 2022. He claims he sent the message to a private Snapchat group as a joke, which he thought the message would be encrypted. However, the message was intercepted by intelligence agencies over French airspace as it was traveling from London to Spain. Authorities scrambled to get a Spanish fighter jet up to escort the plane. When the plane landed, the teen was arrested, slapped with a court date in early 2024. The man was facing more than $150,000 in fines to cover wow. expenses for the emergency fighter jet deployment. A judge, though, in Madrid recently cleared him of all charges because no bomb was found and there was no legitimate threat. You know, it, and we were talking about this, is what if somebody went through and maybe had some kind of uh, traumatic experience yeah. thinking there might be a bomb on this, could they, he be liable? You know, who knows? I would say so. I would think so, at least. I guess the question is, did anyone on board the plane know while they were yeah. being escorted by the fighter jets if that was if in that fact was the, the case? case. I, yeah. I, I would pro I'd probably I'd doubt it, but, I, but it makes you wonder altogether. There's got to be, and you know, there, there should be something that outside of the fines happen to this person because yeah. they obviously were not thinking correctly. There should be some sort of punishment. punishment now right, he claims right. it was a joke because he's of Middle Eastern descent so he was making an offhanded comment about his looks to a private Snapchat group but regardless you, you just know in this day and age you, know you don't make those kinds of comments. You got it. We're in the, especially we're in a, a post 9-11 yeah. everything's different now. I'm sorry. Yeah. Alright speaking of teenagers a pair of Colorado high school cornhole players are making history becoming the first duo to earn a college scholarship. The high schoolers seniors are taking their bag tossing talents to Winthorpe University in South Carolina. The teammates are considered to be five star recruits in the popular backyard game. The duo were named two time national champions at the first ever to win scholarships from a Division Ooh. I school. Now, they say they've used to be involved in other sports before they started traveling the country, all for cornhole tournaments. So, this could be something I would love to see sponsors. Um, corn snakes, everything. Corn <laughs> snakes. <laughs> yeah, could be their mascot, that sort of thing. Possible. But, but I, professional, I'm certain there's professional cornhole uh, well, players out there. Well, right? if you think about that, will it become an Olympic sport? And, and, and should it? Yeah. Well, I think, and it's not that hard. I mean, you just got to prove that the world plays cornhole, which yeah. I believe they do. If I, I think some would argue if curling can curling. be in, an Olympic sport, why can't cornhole? And ping you. pong is also an Olympic sport. So again, why couldn't cornhole be an Olympic sport? I say there should be more. I mean, that's what we kind of need to do. Yeah. Maybe throw it like in the Winter Olympics because yeah. they don't get as much. <laughs> it's an indoor. It, you can and play it indoor, as an indoor right. sport. And they don't get as much of the, the notoriety yeah. like the summer games do. So at least I would probably turn in to see the. I'd get behind a cornhole team. Now, here's the other question. Is there a pickleball scholarship now available? Well, uh, you know, there should be. I, I'm <laughs> telling you, if we can get the, I, I know that it's more like an older generation kind of plan, but it's getting younger yeah. and younger. Yeah. So I would garner to say that more than likely that probably okay. will <laughs> All right, we will uh, we'll work our way back to you right after this. We'll do a little traveling. Flash Travel's coming up. Where to go for spring break and Ooh. how to save money this year. Stick like around. It's time for a little air, land, and sea. It's time for flash travel. It's time for us to start thinking about where to go for spring break. And today we're gonna to focus on some spring break travel tips that we're actually gonna save you some money if you're looking for something, say, less party central. Experts are saying that right now is the time to book your flight. You see, once the month of March appears, spring break flights, well, they're gonna get even more expensive, not less. Sounds like pretty much every year, right? Don't worry, I actually have a little good news for you. 
What's the difference about this spring break travel season 2024? Well, according to the travel website Hopper, this year is a little odd. As of late January, travel prices seem to be stable, if not falling, for the traditional spring break travel period. Now, this is the Consumer Price Index for Domestic Affairs. This year is a little odd. As of late January, prices have seemed to be a little stable, if not falling, for that traditional spring break travel period. The good news is that car rental prices have actually plummeted. They average about 41 bucks a day in the United States, and that's a 36% drop from last year. Even better news is that gas prices are falling. They're gonna drop an average of $3.36 per gallon. That's down from about 5% this time last year. And do you need a place to sleep? Don't worry, hotel rates are projected to slide just a little bit. They average around $220 per night domestically. That's a decrease of 43%. Now listen, spring break is a sprawling occasion which travel patterns are actually hard to predict. Prices could actually soar in the weeks leading up to the traditional start of the spring break. They also could fall a little further. What does that mean? If you see a price that you like right now, book it. And if you're looking for where to go, well, our friends at Alliance Travel Insurance have actually published a list every year. And this is their latest list of the top five destinations domestically. Well, the city beautiful actually tops the list. No surprise with all the pleasant weather and all the theme parks that Orlando has to offer. Then we got to go out west for number two. It's Phoenix, Arizona, followed by New York City. Las Vegas, and then rounding out number five is Los Angeles, California. Now, if you're looking to actually get out of the country, we got five destinations internationally that are on their list. And it looks like Mexico is the place where it's at. First on the list is Cancun, Mexico, followed by San Jose de Del Cabo, Mexico, Nassau, Bahamas, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and the number five destination, Montego Bay, Jamaica. All right, so when you're thinking about where to go, Keep those destinations in mind so that you'll avoid all the high prices and the long lines. Here's what you need to do if you want that dollar to go even further. Be flexible. Fly midweek. Airlines and airfares are far less expensive at that time, and it might be actually worth pulling the kids out of school a day early. Consider a one-stop instead of a non-stop flight. A one-stop through Miami or Dallas actually might be far less expensive, but remember, a stop means you could risk your misconnections and increases the likelihood of lost baggage. So consider the risks and consider travel insurance. Drive overnight. Roads actually get clogged during spring break, but they're still relatively clear at night when everybody's sleeping. Plus the kids are in the back and they're gonna be on their phones the whole way anyway, sleeping. Finally, consider alternate airports or routing. Avoid busy highways or find a smaller airport with lower fares. Outside the box thinking is rewarded when it comes to spring break. Let's do some flash travel hacks. We all love getting those easy to follow travel hacks and there's plenty of them. Here's a good one from Muddle Through Mummy on Instagram. That's a solution for feeding your kids while you're on a plane. This is the travel hack all parents need to hear. It will save you so much money on your next flight and is a game changer if you have picky eaters like me. Simply take some porridge and pasta pots with you on your flight and then order some hot water from the drinks trolley and you're good to go. All right, well, she says that not only, only is it convenient, it's actually gonna save you money. If you buy porridge or oatmeal, <laughs> even ramen noodles on a plane, it's likely to cost you about three to four times as much as in a supermarket. So what about you? Do you have some travel hacks? We would love to hear from us, from you at least, on our Facebook page. Here's what you gotta do. Look for Flash Travel TV on Facebook and then leave your comment. And either faster way, go to flashtraveltv.com and it'll take you directly there. It's time for us to talk trends. Joining us now, a celebrity lifestyle and wellness expert, Seema Cohen. She's got some really top trends for beauty and wellness. Seema, welcome back to Daily Flash. What do you got for us today? So good to see you, Mitch. Yes. All right, let's start with Makeup Revolution. Makeup Revolution carries the perfect set of luminous makeup for every occasion and beyond, all under $15. Try Bright Light Face Glow, $12 at Target, Elite for a lit from within radiance. And don't miss Skin Silk Serum Foundation, just $14 at Ulta, giving you flawless, breathable coverage. Elevate your beauty without breaking the bank. Makeup Revolution has got you covered for flawless complexion all year round. All right, discover the power of Orlo's active omega-3s, sourced from pure algae, grown in Iceland with green energy and pristine water. 
additional fish oil often causes discomfort and requires higher dosage. Orlo's patented polar lipid form ensures three times better absorption without the fishy aftertaste. Support heart, brain, and overall health with Orlo's active omega-3s. Visit orlonutrition.com today and subscribe to receive 15% off your omegas every day. Plus, when you join their newsletter, you can even receive a bonus discount. Sports drink aren't supposed to weigh you down. They're supposed <laughs> to lift you up. Meet local weather, the healthier Gatorade. Only six grams of natural sugar packed with electrolytes, vitamins, and adaptogens in an all aluminum recyclable bottle. Fun flavors such as fruit punch, orange clementine, and fan favorite mango passion fruit. Embrace the natural power with local weather where love meets fitness in every sip. I love Find them at Whole Foods, Air One, Miss Fits Market, and Go Pack. Sadaf is a family-owned company that's been around for over 40 years. They pride themselves on creating chef-inspired, unique pantry items that you can't find anywhere else. And if you're looking for the freshest and highest quality ingredients at an affordable cost, then Sadaf is for you. Check out the pomegranate juice, the cozy herbal teas, and all of the set of rose waters. Perfect gifts for all the foodies and chef-inspired loved one in your life. And you can find all of it and much more at sadaf.com. Seema, thank you so much. Folks want to find out more. You're on Instagram, right? I'm on Instagram at Seema Cohen Official. That's correct. All right. Fantastic. What we'll do is we'll put this interview and all the information on our website at dailyflashshow.com. We recently caught up with CPA Lisa Green-Lewis with TurboTax. Here's what she says about filing your taxes and using the child tax credit this year. Recent buzz around the child tax credit expanding following recent House approval has parents questioning whether or not they should hold off on filing. But experts and the IRS are urging people to file regardless of what happens. The IRS commissioner reassured everyone that should the child tax credit expand, that they would make adjustments on their end and there wouldn't be anything that tax filers need to do, you know, to adjust their return. Green Lewis says there are some other credits you may be eligible for, so don't delay filing. The faster you file, the closer you'll be to your refund and, you know, you'll be able to get those other credits that you're eligible for as well. Like the child and dependent care credit, which is up to $2,100 if you have two kids or the earned income tax credit, which for a family with three kids, it's $7,430. In order to claim the tax credit, just make sure you meet the requirements. With a good chunk of credit at stake, Green Lewis says to enlist an expert such as TurboTax to help to make sure you receive the maximum refund you're eligible for. TurboTax is up to date. In addition to that, if you want to do your taxes yourself, we guide you through claiming the child tax credit, but we also have our TurboTax Live experts and they can help you along the way. They can review your return before you file or you can fully hand your taxes over to them and they can do your taxes from start to finish. And then we also have our local independent tax pros that you can meet in person and they can also do your taxes. For more info about the tax credit and to start filing now, head to TurboTax.com. Up next, a celebrity nail stylist is showing us one of the hottest nail trends for spring, and it's so easy you can do it at home. Hi, and thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to share with you, brand new from KISS, the Salon Extend LED Soft Gel System. It's so easy now to bring the salon home and update your manicure in minutes. It's the first of its kind for long-lasting salon quality gel nail extensions right at home. These are pre-sculpted, they're pre-polished with the exclusively formulated KISS Soft Gel Adhesive for a weightless, bubble-free, natural nail finish that lasts up 
to 14 days. The removal is totally mess free. They come in 18 pre-polished styles and they are available in different designs, different colors, and different lengths and shape as well. Some major trends that we're seeing are natural tones, a sheer beige, a soft pink, the floral daisy design, which is what I'm currently wearing right now, along with the French tip. I like to mix it up. And also the jelly nails. A pastel is big along with the jelly, so you have two trends in one. And of course, a long squoval for a shape and a little glitter ombre tip as well. For more information, you can go to kissusa.com and these are available in retailers Ulta, Target, CVS, and Walmart. Next up, we got one cell phone provider who wants to show some love to its customers. Check this out. February is a month dedicated to love, but Verizon's love for its customers extends throughout the entire year. That's why customers get the best network and exclusive value they can't get anywhere else. We are always listening to our customers and they want control and flexibility with their plans. My plan from Verizon gives you the ability to pick and choose the perks you want, like Netflix and Max for just $10. Save on every one and change any time, no penalties or fees. At Verizon, we're all about connecting people to each other and what they love most. And for a limited time, you can get a new 5G phone on us when you trade in an eligible phone in any condition with a new line on Unlimited Ultimate with our reliable, fastest 5G, double mobile hotspot data, and more. Some restrictions apply. Visit verizon.com slash myplan or head to your local Verizon store. KSA Entertainment believes in our communities. We value those who have dedicated their lives to enrich our own. KSA Entertainment is proud to introduce our corporate initiative, KSA Cares. KSA Cares shines a light, gives a voice, and lends a helping hand through compelling awareness initiatives. From supporting veterans to environmental awareness, KSA Entertainment is proud to produce content supporting ways to help communities all across America. Hey, welcome back to Daily Flash. If you're one of the millions on a weight loss medication or maybe even thinking about talking to your doctor about using one, you definitely want to hear this. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us. GLP-1s are the newer class of appetite suppressing medications, which act as a hard reset of sorts for those dealing with imbalances or an unhealthy state. But as Chief Medical Officer of LifeMD, I've seen that long-term weight loss is much more than just about shedding pounds. It's about creating a balanced and fulfilling life where all aspects of your health, mental, physical, and social, can thrive. And these medications, they serve as a safe and effective tool for that reset. But there is a recognition within the medical community that they're just one tool. A lot of patients on a medically supported weight loss journey will benefit from two important things, the tools and the support to create a healthier lifestyle. Optavia has helped many develop a healthy lifestyle. It's because it's based in habit creation, but more importantly, it's guided by a coach and a community. Now, when you're on a medically supported weight loss journey, it's important to incorporate healthy eating habits because your appetite might be decreased on the medications. Evidence also suggests that the loss of lean body mass can range from 20 to 50% of your total weight loss. This is a big deal because muscle supports our everyday life. So to combat that muscle loss that often accompanies weight loss with the medically supported weight loss, it's important to incorporate a nutrition plan that is adequate in both protein and other key nutrients. Our research also shows that most people, they know incorporating a healthy lifestyle is important, yet few only 17% are confident that they can do it on their own. We found that people tend to be more successful when they incorporate the support of an Optavia coach and a community of people going through similar journeys. So for more information, you can head on over to optavia.com lifestyle, and there you'll find more information on our products, our coaching, and how a healthy lifestyle program can complement medically supported weight loss. 
We definitely thank you for uh, letting us be in your life today. Well, yeah. yeah. Nice. For more information on any of today's stories, be sure to visit our website, dailyflashshow.com. All right, we'll be back in just 23 short hours. Y'all be good or good <laughs> at it, and we'll see you when we look at you. Bye-bye, everybody.